I'm going to be talking about webhooks, automation in general. Automation has been my particular passion and interest since I was a kid and I was given this little toy robot in the late 70s and 80s. I always thought I was going to end up having uh, a robot to do my work for me from R2-D2 and uh, Rosie the robot. I always expected that future like with flying cars where all my work would be handled by some machine. Um, at this point, I don't even own a Roomba. So, uh, but I have I have done a lot of different scripting and tech over my career. I have in the past number of years automated myself out of two jobs, but into one that was much better. So I, I consider it a pretty good wash. Uh, but when I, I was at a, I don't remember which one of the, it was at one JNOC where they first announced webhooks. And um, I've been showing it off ever since, because for me, it is one of the, the powers of that Jamf and, and being able to tie into other systems. And I've seen it used in a lot of cool ways. I'm gonna be doing it in the interest of time, kind of a simple demo. Uh, it may not be the most exciting thing in the world, but I'm going to, but it does lead to much bigger conversations. So starting with um, being in, in Jamf Pro, in the, under global management, the webhooks, I'm going to start by creating my webhook. And I have been refreshing this page all day long. Good, it didn't time out on me. Um, let's see, we'll just call this notify Slack of policy. Now, in order to fill in the webhook URL, I need to have a webhook. Um, there are a number of different automation services that you can subscribe to rather than having to build your own infrastructure, uh, using a computer, setting up uh, a server in the cloud, setting up PHP, et cetera. I am using for today's purposes, uh, Zapier. And I have confirmed recently that it is in fact, I've, been, I've heard it pronounced Zapier, Zapier. Uh, somebody even had a, uh, my wife suggested it should be called Zapier as if it was the French, French pronunciation. Um, uh, but I'm using Zapier just because it is one of the more popular ones. It is one of the cleaner ones. But I, in order to get that link, I start off by making a new Zap. The joys of doing web demos is just fascinating. And in the various list of apps, I'm, well, as it turns out, it's right here. I'm using the webhooks, which will catch that. Um, it is worth noting, as it says here, this is a premium service. I'll cover a little bit more about what that means in this context in a little bit, because it, it is one of those catch points for some people. And when I say continue, it's then going to give me this URL. I will simply copy it, come back over here and paste it in. Uh, in this particular case, I don't need to do anything with authentication type. I don't need to, I'm leaving the defaults timeout. The one thing I am changing is content type. Uh, Jamf does have a pretty good article on, um, on what these webhooks do, what they send out. I'm going to be, Zapier prefers JSON data. In fact, I don't even know if I can do XML in it, um, but that's what I'm gonna be using. I'll send out JSON, JavaScript object notation. And then I select my event. Um, so you can see just the sheer number of events that Jamf will, can cause a webhook trigger. Um, one of the, one of the more interesting ones I've seen in a real world situation was using computer added. And instead of using, uh, Zapier, like we're doing to be the glue in between, there was a, uh, help desk software that had the webhook capture built directly into it so that right in here, all the client had to do was anytime a new computer was added, anytime a new computer got enrolled, a ticket was generated in order to say, uh, hey, Bob just got a new computer, make sure he's okay. For today's purposes, I am playing around with computer policy finished. And I will hit save. And now my webhook is ready. So anytime a policy runs, it's going to send a blob of JSON to this. All right, I am not going to bother picking off a particular key. I'm just gonna grab the whole thing and parse it inside. 
and now I need to test my trigger. I need to send it some sort of command. Uh, luckily in terminal, I can just simply do sudo jamf policy. Uh, I don't know that on my demo machine, I've got one uh, that will just catch based on sudo jamf policy. So I've got one set up. And now if I hit test trigger, it shows that I have captured that data. Cool, I know the information that I needed. Now the question is, what am I going to do with it? Well, since the entire purpose of this demonstration was to show catching something in Slack, why don't we do that? I'll send a channel message, choose my account, And I can put in a message, uh, let's see, that super important policy ran. And I can add in, I could put in multiple lines, but for today's purposes, I'm just gonna say Airstream, uh, let's see. And I can just get it from that, that information that, that Zapier pulled in for us, that captured, I can use to know what's going on and fill in my blanks. Um, and since it's going into Slack, it's already gonna have the date time on it. So I'm not gonna bother embedding that. I'm gonna send this as a bot, otherwise because I'm authorized to do this, they would all come from me. And uh, you can ask Eric about how he feels about getting automated uh, messages from me sometime. It's a, it's a good story. Um, we can just simply call this Jamf notifications or better yet, Jamf alerts. If I don't want to just go with the boring Slack icon, I can put in something here. And if I can't have my robot, I will at least have his face. Um, and the other, where is it? Include a link to this zap. I'm going to be turning this off. Otherwise, every single Slack message is going to include a link to Zapier. And since nobody else is going to be able to edit this, I don't want them to necessarily get it. Uh, I'm leaving the rest of this alone for the moment. Um, Oops, except broadcast to channel needs to be on. So now I've got my message. If I were uh, feeling up to it, I would probably go ahead. Well, now I need to get back over to Slack. That's the wrong one. I've got my notification. I've confirmed that this is working and I'm going to turn it on. Just took a couple of minutes. And now if I want to test even further, uh, I happen to have some amazing policy that is just here for the entire purpose of making, mm -hmm. being super important, but we need to know when this happens. So if I click the button, Uh, I love sitting and waiting for things while, there we go. I got my notification. Uh, I forgot to put the actual policy name or anything in there so that I could see the information, but you'll notice this first one ran, it was a demo. Well, in the long run, I don't care about that. I really only care about the super important one. What happens if I've got some other boring policy sitting around here I don't necessarily care about him, but when I run this one, you know, in entertainment, timing is everything. And when you're relying on a computer and it's timing, mm -hmm. it just throws everything off. There we go. The automation button that Chad was talking about earlier is just a button that he programmed to send a Slack message to me every single time he presses him. it. And it, he, he can spam it. So we had to uh, pull the plug on that bad boy. And I brought it back while I was preparing for this demo. But my the, the point of showing this off is um, I'm getting the same message both for my demo policy 
for my important policy, the one I cared about, and for a boring policy. Any policy is going to be triggered by this, any policy. So I, if you're going to do this, you're probably going to want to add in a middle one. And it's fun typing on screen too. I can stay, I'm not gonna finish this one in the interest of time. Uh, I can put in a filter and only grab the policy ID that I care about. So I don't have to get all of them, only the important one or important ones can then show up. Um, the reason I mentioned the premium is Zapier does have that premium policy does come with a price tag. It's $20 a month to some that's nothing for the purpose of automating your life to others. You know, that's a Disney plus subscription. So there's a, uh, a consideration to be done here. <laughs> Not only is webhook a premium and requiring this pay, but so is without premium, you are limited to two the, the, the thing receiving and the thing sending out. I can't put a filter in the middle unless I'm premium. Uh, and the other things I wanted to quickly point out is Zapier is not the only game in town. Here is the exact same automation done in IFT, short for if this, then that. Uh, here is Integromat, a new kid on the block that I'm really becoming infatuated with. Um, but also has pointed out that most of what I'm attempting to do could also be done with an email. Uh, you know, that whole, this message could have just been an email. A number of those same things that are webhooks are also available as notifications in Slack. You could set up, or in Jamf, I could set up a user simply to be there to send out notifications. And Slack has the ability to receive email addresses. So I could have just simply embedded this and just connect Jamf to Slack. The downside to that is, uh, A, not everything I want is in there. The policies are not in there. I can do smart groups, um, which is the other demo I was going to build, but I can't do policy runs. So there are some trade-offs, but there are a ton of different tools. If Zapier in particular seemed of interest to you, uh, I am signed up for this next week, they are having a class to go above and beyond basic learning. If you search for their Zapier 102, uh, we will have this link in our post show notes as well. Um, let's see, was there anything else I needed to cover? I'm not thinking of anything, so I'll open up if there are any questions before I stop screen sharing. Yeah, and just a quick question for the whole group, Chad. Um, is there, has anyone here used, is, are they using Webhooks now or have used it in the past? Um, just do a little hand raise. Uh, so Chad, I have one question for you uh, regarding yeah. the Webhooks. So wh what exactly the use case for this? Because uh, it looks pretty much good, like, you know, but technically like, you know, in real time, I don't see the much use case. Uh, like we use a lot of applications, a lot of integration, a lot of automation, but I don't see like, you know, the much use case might be like, I'm not aware about this, right? So I just want to understand like what exactly the use case for webhooks and how we can utilize this feature. Absolutely, good question. Um, yeah, like I said, I was doing kind of a, uh, a simple example, but you're right. So what are some better examples? Um, I mentioned earlier the idea that one of the earlier ones was uh, tying into computer added whenever a computer gets enrolled. So you could have it so that it sends a message uh, whenever a computer gets enrolled for that follow-up. But also, uh, I don't know about any of you, but I love setting up smart groups to look for trouble before it happens. Uh, computer is not file vault encrypted, hasn't had a recent update, hasn't been checking in, yep. needs security updates. Any one of those in a smart group could fire off a notification. And also the reason for using webhooks as opposed to say uh, having an auditor account is if you've got tier one help desk or tier two and they may not, Jamf may not be the most friendly thing for them to be signing into on top of everything else they have to sign into. Instead of having them go and look for information, using webhooks to send that information out and get it to the people that need it. Um, those are just a couple examples off the top of my head. Does that, does that answer your question? Yeah, I think yeah, that makes complete sense. So basically kind of notification, kind of notifier, uh, 
to make things easy for the support teams, right? Yeah, it's, it's a notification system, just like all of our other notifications, just like our email notifications. But in this case, I can, using webhooks and other services, APIs, that Jamf and, I can put that information to work for me, uh, generating tickets and help desk to, to in, uh, in, in a tick, uh, help desk, I'll try that again, in a help desk ticketing system, that was fun. Um, uh, Damien, who is in this session, gave one of my favorite presentations, a little pat on the back for you, uh, a number of years ago. But more recently, one of my favorite presentations uh, was specifically on automation and saving clicks one click at a time. And he used a lot, he used Zapier and a lot of other services. And that's when I first started playing with this. Um, so there's a lot of power in here. And it's, it's not just about getting notifications, but about having that information put to work for you. Got it. And like, you know, uh, when I talk about the proxy, like uh, there are some applications which are proxy aware and which are proxy communicated. In that case, let's say if I don't have the authentication type in the Jamf, and because there are so many authentication type, like, you know, so let's say if we have a different authentication, which is not listed here, in that case, how we can customize that feature? Yeah. Um... That's going to depend a lot more on the uh, particular hook, which web hook you did. Like I said, the policy mm -hmm. one uh, sends out for all policies. The smart computer group does it. You can specify which group, but really on the pulling inside, um, how you how you parse that information, either in your automation system or um, in your automation system or in the receiving application. Got it. That uh, makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Terrence, you had asked about what was the name of the other product that wasn't if it's called Integromat. I'm really starting to dig this service. I, and they've got great customer support. I found a number of bugs and they have been great at quashing them for me. Um, yeah. And with that, I'm going to, unless there are any other specific questions I should answer, I should hand back to Eric. Thank you so much, Chad. Thank you. Thanks, Chad. Cool. One thing I want to say on all this stuff, um, Chad gave a very simple example of how to use this. I remember when webhooks were first presented by Bryson and he kind of showed how to do it and you had to set up an AWS Lambda share and you had to code in Python. It was, you know, it took a lot of work. It, it, it was, uh, this is a much more accessible way to be able to use webhooks and they can be very powerful um, because it's, you can do API calls based on any event that happens. So you can do Python code based on that event. So a lot more you can do with this than what we're showing here, um, but it's a very accessible way to do something that was normally pretty difficult. Um, um, the, that the other, pass it on the other reason, the last thing I wanna say, and I know I keep saying the last thing, the other reason I chose Zapier, particularly for this demo, uh, Chris just mentioned the idea of having a Lambda or some other external thing. Zapier is the only one at this time that has the ability to embed, I could put in an action and run code, either Python or JavaScript. So if there isn't something I need, if I wanna be able to pre-parse that information, do a lot of math or pull information from other places, um, instead of just something coming down the workflow, uh, I can write that code directly on my own. 